2 minutes, 28 seconds, and 8 tenths of a second. That's how long Dead Space 2 speedrunner Shark Hat sits here in the void, waiting until he can make his next move. Not every speedrun strategy is as straightforward as running to the end of a level. In the pursuit of speed, sometimes it's more important to think outside the box, and maybe sit around for a little bit. Dead Space 2 was a game destined to never be a good speedrun. It's a masterpiece of a game. It has tremendous atmosphere, super fun and intuitive gameplay mechanics, as well as a pretty phenomenal story. This makes it one of the best survival horror games of all time. But it was just not a good speedrun. Back in late 2018, the speedrun was just over 2 hours and 10 minutes long, with nearly half of that being just unskippable cutscenes and in-game cinematics. What Dead Space had good in a casual experience, it lacked in a speedrunning context. And that's okay. Not every game can be a good speedrun, but there was a group of dedicated people. Passionate hobbyists who loved the game. They dreamt of a time where Dead Space 2 would be a fun game to speedrun. With less waiting, less cutscenes, and more expression of skill. Speaking of waiting, I'm waiting for you to subscribe. Over the last year and a half, these people would create a scientific revolution in the Dead Space speedrunning community, bringing the game to just under 1 hour and 6 minutes. Countless out of bounds tricks and cutscene skips were discovered, one by one taking out all the things that made Dead Space a bad speedrun in the first place, replacing them with insanely difficult tricks. Some of these tricks are pretty straightforward, going out of bounds and then running past locked doors, or jumping straight to the end of a level. But not every skip came easy. Over the whole year and a half of testing and experimenting, there were some great improvements. Many cutscenes and idle sections were skipped. In fact, there's only 8 in-game cinematic sequences left that don't have some sort of skip or trick that makes them faster. That may sound like a lot of sections like that, but coming from a game where almost half of it was those, that's actually insane. So where does this two and a half minutes of standing in place come into play? This is what was previously the ninth unskippable cinematic section of the game. The Drill Auto-Scroller. An auto-scroller is a section of the game where the progression is tied to an objective that the player has no control over. It's essentially just on a timer, leaving the player to wait for it to end. Sometimes this is due to the screen scrolling being locked at a fixed rate, like in Super Mario World. But in this instance, it's the pace of the drill that you ride in Chapter 12. Isaac and Ellie repair a drill that is used to mine through a bunch of debris and past a ton of necromorphs, reaching the end only to blow out the government sector's boy hole, throwing you straight into Chapter 13. For years, the drill was one of the community's least favorite parts of the speedrun. It's four minutes of walking in circles killing enemies. In no way is it remotely difficult. You kill most enemies before they even get on the drill, and you're never going to run out of ammo. So essentially, it's just 4 minutes of downtime near the end of the run, and it's right in between two super cool tricks. Just before this section, you actually skip killing Strauss by flying out of bounds in 0G and reloading checkpoint into this elevator. Right after you perform Idiot Skip, which skips being locked in the room above the CEC soldiers that all die horrible deaths. Essentially, this auto-scroller killed the pacing of the run, and for the longest time, remained the white whale of Dead Space speedrunning. It was a joke. A dream of ours. Just fine drill skip, we would say. Knowing it was impossible. No matter how much tech we found, how many things we had skipped, the drill just seemed to be too unskippable. Completely impenetrable to any attempts in breaking it. It was theorized and planned to no end, but every effort came up with nothing. In the attempts to find new skips and tricks, tools were developed to help test ideas and theories. These tools are never used in actual runs, but only as testing tools to find new strategies that can then be developed into viable, real run scenarios. People in the community like Arsis created applications that displayed location values and allowed for teleporting to specific coordinate locations. These tools led to many breakthroughs, especially in Chapter 10. But again, the drill stood tall, as one huge blemish on a run that was so close to amazing. That is, until we discovered something that would change how we saw the drill forever. 
Using the tools to teleport off the drill once it was started, we discovered that the area of the map that was currently loaded was controlled by the location of the drill. It actively deloads the collision of previous sections of the map that you can no longer see from the drill. This saves resources and makes perfect sense, but what we didn't realize is that if you fall far enough after the drill despawns the floor, you land roughly 100 coordinate points from the place that Chapter 13 takes place in. You see, the way Dead Space 2 loads in its levels, it's all on one big interconnected world. The whole game takes place on one big map, and locations overlap each other on the coordinate plane. Generally, the chapter after, and the previous chapter before the one you were on, currently stay at a level 1 deload. As I explained in my previous video on the subject that you're going to go watch right after this one, level 1 deloads maintain the checkpoint triggers and doors of the level, allowing speedrunners to hit them and loading in that area from the wrong part of the game. By falling out of bounds after the drill, you could in theory land near where chapter 13 takes place. Maybe you could hit a checkpoint and load in, skipping the drill section. There was a few problems however. For one, there was no known way to actually get off of the drill once it started. Any attempts that had been made were futile, it wasn't even close to working. Even if you did manage to get off it, you would still have to fall several hundred coordinates to where chapter 13 loads in. In Dead Space 2, if you freefall, there is no final trigger that has the game kill Isaac or teleport him back in bounds, but there is a fall timer. If you fall for too long, then Isaac will die, and this is the safety net that stops you from softlocking. The distance from the drill to where the chapter 13 was is so far away that you would actually die before even getting remotely close. On top of that, even though it's only one chapter ahead, it also wasn't level 1 deloaded. If you tried to teleport to the checkpoint locations while the drill was still running, you would actually just teleport back to the drill, as the checkpoint did not even load yet. For a time, there was a slight glimmer of hope, but it really did seem like it was utterly impossible. Even if it was loaded, there was no way that you could get there from the possible locations that you could jump from the drill when it despawns. And even if you could, you would still die on the fall, before you even get there. On top of that, it's not even loaded. Maybe they knew that there must be some other way, or maybe it was just plain out of spite, but the Dead Space community didn't stop after that. There was always more ideas to test, or alternative theories that could be true. It wasn't an everyday thing, life moved on, most days people just did runs or tested other skips and tricks. But every once in a while, someone was crazy enough to spend a few hours to try to think, tinker, and test drill skip. It was discovered that Chapter 13 does actually completely load in, but only once the drill reaches the end of its pathway. This may seem like kind of a bleak deal, but the drill itself wasn't the only thing that was super slow in this section. After we get off the drill, we get like a 40 second long unskippable cutscene where Isaac talks to Ellie. Then you wait for a door to open, and after that, Isaac sends Ellie away and talks to Nicole. These interactions rack up somewhere around 3 minutes of time. If you could land in the right spot in Chapter 13, you could skip all of this, so even if you have to wait for the drill to reach the end, it could save upward of 3 minutes if you land in the right spot in Chapter 13. This fits another piece of the puzzle for the skip. If you could manage to stay alive long enough to land in that right spot, and wait long enough for it to load in, those cutscenes could be skipped. But it was just one piece of this seemingly unending puzzle. The next piece of the puzzle was actually already discovered in Chapter 11. Near the beginning of the chapter, Strauss takes away Ellie's depth perception and we are supposed to exact revenge. Launching out into Zero G, if you restart checkpoint you spawn in a more optimal location to complete the puzzle sections. Normally this would be on a timer, as you only have a limited supply of oxygen in the vacuum of space, but because of a trick that you do in Chapter 1, you never get the suit. This allows for unlimited air in Zero G, as Isaac learns how to hold his breath. Heading right to this corner, we complete the puzzle the fastest way possible, by bashing our head into the wall repeatedly until the laws of physics themselves let us out. If you're playing at frame rates in the 200 plus range and you wiggle in Zero G, you can clip right through walls. Zero G areas are a big bounding box that surround the intended play area. They often extend far outside what you would normally consider the play area itself. 
Because of this, you can fly out of bounds and hit checkpoint triggers like this one. This checkpoint loads you in right after you kill Strauss, making him never actually die in the speedrun. So he's probably just still running free around there somewhere to this day. It also skips the puzzle and the combat room following it. This saves a few minutes, but the really interesting thing is that you are actually overlapping the same area of Zero G from before. And because you skip killing Tross, you actually skip the trigger that the game has in place to despawn the Zero Gravity. The Zero Gravity bounding box actually overlaps tons of this level, and since it's still active, you get to keep it this whole time. Because it spawns you right in front of the elevator, you would think that you could just fly to the top, skipping having to wait for the elevator. Unfortunately, the Zero-G is limited to the bounding box area from the previous room, and while it does extend very far, it doesn't even go close to the height of the elevator. What makes this really important though is that the Zero-G extends underneath the drill, and is big enough for you to be able to fly to the coordinates from Chapter 13. The only problem is, the fall is still too far to stop you from dying, even with the Zero-G box being halfway down. But this problem is one that could be solved with a little bit of force. This is probably one of the dumbest and most convoluted speedrun tricks of all time, and I'm about to prove it. It turns out that when the game plays in cinematics, it gives Isaac invincibility so he can't die to the events happening on screen. At the top of the elevator, Isaac's ex-girlfriend tries to choke him in a way that gets him a little bit excited. But we're past our ex and don't want to be choked anymore. We prefer choking the skip now instead. If you fly to the top of the Zero-G bounding box and punch, you can keep the standing position horizontal on the wall. Then ride the elevator up to the top of the shaft on the side of it. Punching over and over again maintains the Zero-G state as long as you never stop punching. Doing so for about 2 minutes lets you ride all the way to the top and land on this platform. From here you could do a little bit of platforming and end up at the door above where Isaac gets choked. This trick is really scary, as if you miss any of the punches or platforming, you fall and have to do the whole elevator again, killing any good runs. Once at the top, you kill the enemies in the elevator, which unlocks the door. This is necessary for the next step. By walking over this wall and then off the edge, you can hit the checkpoint trigger that starts chapter 12. From here, you reload it to get back and bounce. The whole reason we punch up the shaft is to avoid the cutscene. But since we never actually opened the door, it was never triggered. Loading Chapter 12 despawns the cutscene itself, however the trigger that gives Isaac invincibility is actually opening the door from the elevator's side. So doing this gives you invincibility. Without the cutscene taking it away after it's over. And because of this, we can now survive the fall off of the drill and into the zero gravity bounding box. So, in case you're a normal human and that was incredibly hard to follow, let's recap. By clipping out of bounds in Zero G, you can skip killing Strauss. Doing so keeps Zero G from Chapter 11 around for the rest of the trick. In the elevator, you can punch to the top of the shaft and then skip the cutscene going right into Chapter 12. From there, you can backtrack to the cutscene and get invincibility. You start the drill and then get off of it, the level will deload, dropping you into the zero gravity section from before. You survive this fall because you're invincible. From here you can get to where chapter 13 loads in, and wait for it to do so when the drill gets to the end of the level. Once the drill is there, it despawns the Zero-G bounding box, dropping you into chapter 13. There's just two problems left. There are currently no known ways to get off the drill, and the edge of the Zero-G bounding box is just barely out of range of the checkpoint trigger that skips those cutscenes in chapter 13. For a long time, this is how it stood. The trick was practically complete, all but two pieces of the puzzle were found, and the skip was estimated to save about six minutes if it was possible. But we simply couldn't find a way to get off the drill, and there was no point in finding a setup for the Zero-G section if we couldn't even get there in the first place. From time to time, people would experiment with trying to get off the drill, but no one could find one for quite some time. Until the discovery of Floor Clips. It turns out that you can use Kinesis to get objects underneath you, allowing you to stand on top of them. And if you do that, instead of making you fly away like it's Breath of the Wild, this actually clips you through the floor. By doing so, you can get out of bounds in quite a few areas. This actually does not work on the drill, as there is no objects in the area that are suitable to use this trick. But while trying to figure out if that was possible or not, 
Shark Hat was playing at 30 FPS and trying to clip to the ground with this panel. And then this happened. What? <gasps> what? No. No. No way. Did I just find Drill Skip? The final piece of the puzzle was found. All that was left was to find a setup for the trick to be able to get from the Zero G section into Chapter 13. And to be able to do that without using any external tools or cheats. Timing was the issue here. Once you get off the drill, it takes the same amount of time every time to get to the end. Once it does, it deloads the zero G section and loads in chapter 13. There is a gap from the zero G to chapter 13 that needs to be cleared, but you have to do it with the correct timing or you will fall right past it or even fall short. Once the skip is proven to be possible like this, the community all jumps at the opportunity to make it consistent. Using tools is fine and dandy when testing, but for actual runs, they're not allowed. This means that the community needs to find a setup that's able to be used based purely on visual and audio cues from inside the game. The problem, it may be a little bit obvious, but it's completely pitch black, and in the deload, the only thing you can hear is the drill. The largest problem is that the location that you need to hit the checkpoint trigger in Chapter 13 is approximately only three Isaacs wide. So the lineup is insanely precise. You need to be able to hit a spot that wide from the right angle and timing, but starting really far away. The further you are away from an object, the more precise your angle towards it must be, as a smaller angle shift at that range can lead to large distances when you end up at the end. This is why we use this texture lineup and try to match it as precisely as possible then leave at a very specific time. Because the trigger for the checkpoint is at an awkward distance from the zero G boundary, if you fly off the edge before it despawns, then you'll overshoot it. And you'll leave too late, you will undershoot it. You want the zero G to despawn at the perfect time, allowing you to land dead center on the trigger. After dozens of hours of testing and trying new setups, the community found this one. It relies on audio cues from the drill to tell you when to start flying. After nearly two and a half minutes, you start running and then voila, right into chapter 13. This skip saves nearly seven minutes over the entirety of its runtime. Skipping killing Strauss, skipping the Nicole cutscene, riding the drill, saving Ellie, and everything in between. It's possibly the most convoluted speedrun trick I've ever seen. It goes across three whole chapters and takes a total of nine minutes to complete from start to finish. 2 minutes, 38 seconds, and 8 tenths of a second of just standing still, waiting for the drill to complete its course. 11 years after the game's release, there is still a group of people so dedicated to the game that they play it nearly every day. Looking into the code and crafting theories for new ways to break and play their favorite game. This skip was once a joke, a mere fantasy for those who ran the game a year ago. But because of their efforts and their ability to keep trying new ideas, it's reality now. Now that it's here to stay, Drill Skip is an integral part of the Dead Space 2 speedrun, and the game is better for it. The Dead Space speedrunning community is one I'm super proud to be a part of. Their ability to always try new things and innovate is super expiring. Big thanks to Sharkat once again for helping me get some footage for this video, and these amazing patrons for supporting me. If you don't know, I stream on Twitch most days starting at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Come drop me a follow. And if you want to see some Dead Space speedrunning action, go follow Sharkat too. The links will be in the description.